Hey guys, Tech Mini here, also known as Matthew Rivera. And today, this video is sponsored by this product or this company here, which is called Xtuga. In this big old box right here, this is a microphone shield. So what a microphone shield does is it just creates a barrier around the microphone almost for any reflections from the room to hit the microphone but it won't eliminate all of it, it will, it will eliminate some of it. Now, if you remember a few years ago, probably in 2019, and you can click right here, I unboxed a newer NW100, and that was a microphone shield. I've just saw really cool pictures of this, and honestly, it sort of reminds me of like, if you go to a chorus concert in high school or in a university, you see these panels behind the people where they stand, and there's these top layers that come off of the panels so they go like this and that's almost exactly what this is it's going to help eliminate everything behind it but also whatever's coming up up top and i'm going to be testing it out here in just the open in my room because i have a sort of acoustic treated closet that has foam panels if you haven't checked that out click right here and I think I did it on my vlogging channel, actually. I'm gonna be doing it out here because nowadays people usually record from home and they record in their bedroom, like what I usually do. And they don't have a lot of acoustic treatment in their room, except probably rugs, a bed, anything sort of soft. You just go into a regular room that has just rug and just hard walls around you, it's gonna sound pretty bad. And once you keep putting up um, absorbent soft material like a bed or acoustic foam on in certain areas of the room because there are things that you can do you can get a reference microphone place it in the middle of the room and place a speaker uh, probably in the middle of the room or somewhere in the room and what it will do is that it will play a sine wave and it will um, give you like a program will give you a diagram of what sounds are reflecting really bad off of these walls and going back around and banging off of each other and that's what's happening with my voice now. So I think I talked enough. I want to unbox this and then we can move on to the microphone stand out here and we can just disassemble the everything on that stand and place this thing on. I wonder how this, how big this thing is and also if it's going to fit my microphone stand. It probably will, but there's only one way to find out. Let's jump right into the unboxing. to slide these cut away from yourself always please okay there's nothing in that box but this is what it looks like y'all this thing is too big for this desk but I'll try to make it fit this is what it looks like it says function introduction sound isolating board with acoustic sponge the microphone it doesn't of course come with the microphone and then a microphone absorbent thing um, shock absorber and shield sound shield support base which is down here so I guess this is where you can either place it on a stand or you can just prop it up somewhere you can see here resist to human voice reflecting from the wall let the noise weaken and even disappear um, even disappear won't really happen because no matter what the front of the microphone is always the sensitive part the back area is what helps with that reflection not coming in as much here's another view of this thing right here here's a couple of photos here let's unbox this tall box right here so we're gonna pull this lift this that's metal <laughs> okay so this has hardware in it. This has screws. Oh, it even comes with a little tiny screwdriver. That's sick. Okay, so it has some nuts and some Allen wrenches screws, like hex Allens. The next one is, this looks like the mounting hardware. It's almost similar to how um, 
the newer one was set up. It has a little tiny post here, screws, washers, adapter for um, 3 three eighths, I think that's his. That was weird. And finally, we will undo this thing right here. Oh boy. This. <laughs> so this booklet shows you how everything is installed. Um, this was, I think, probably Chinese or Japanese. I don't really know, but here you go. And then this one is English for us English folk. So you get to do a three um, fold panel and then you get to do a five. I'm going to do five. What fell out was the actual bracket for the microphone. This is what you can screw the micro um, thing on. You can slide it in the microphone. So there is some assembly required. First off, I love the quality. What I feel right now, you feel the foam, but this is plastic. It's not metal, it's plastic. Um, this has like a snapping mechanism almost. So you have to be really careful. Plastic and sometimes metal don't really match well. So this is what comes with the box. You got five um, panel shields here. You got the bracket for the microphone, mounting hardware, the actual hardware, and then of what comes in the thing and also instructions. Okay, so this is the newer NW100 I've been using for forever, basically. So the microphone I'm gonna be using is called the Sterling Audio ST51. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Usually a condenser has a cardioid, usually and typically it does, and has a cardioid pattern which almost looks like a heart or an apple, almost. So, and also the best part about this is that it gives you somewhat of a flat frequency. It does fluctuate, so it'll basically give you sort of a replica replication of what my voice usually sounds like. I want to make note that usually I have a Behringer um, MA400, um, that's probably going in from this into there and then from there all the way into my audio interface But I have this um, cable right here Directly into my audio interface, which is a UMC 404 HD from Behringer and going into my Mac and It's recording into Pro Tools and also there's going to be no post-processing in that program The only thing I think I'm going to do is probably do a certain amount of DB rays. I'll put it on screen definitely when I'm showing you what it sounds like. And on the preamp on the UMC, um, everything is at um, 12 o'clock, parallel 12 o'clock. It's gonna show you different types of things that I would typically do. And then we're gonna set up that and we're gonna show you what it sounds like. And honestly, I'm in probably the middle of my room and this is like the worst spot to be. So let's test this out and see what it sounds like. I actually have not tried this before actually. This is my first time hearing what this sounds like because I got this off of a friend. So I don't know what this sounds like. So let's give it a shot. I screwed up this voice test because um, someone went into this microphone before to repair it or some kind because I actually took it apart and saw that the soldering points weren't sort of factory they it had white burn marks from the iron the soldering iron being so hot usually the logo is where it's supposed to be facing you and um well it wasn't it was completely 180 so i um, took it apart flipped it and later on i did this video again what you're going to see right now is me realizing it and redoing it and i'm going to be holding the um newer microphone shield and the microphone sort of the same distance of where everything was when i was testing it originally okay so this is sort of approximately of how it was in the beginning of this video when i tested this out and then this is what it sounds like when i'm actually really screaming maybe not directly into the microphone but also just talking to amplify the room noise so this is what it sounds like with the approximate same thing as I did with the pop filter as well as with the um, microphone shield closed a little and it's at the approximately the same distance from the pop shield and the microphone of it being somewhat center and this is what it sounds like with me screaming
So this is what it sounds like with it, with the same distance of me to the microphone, but also with the microphone almost touching or almost very close to the microphone shield. My words suck today. And this is what it sounds like with me really screaming and not really just, I'm just sort of yelling or shouting, just amp trying to amplify what the room sounds like if you can actually hear the room tone. This is what it sounds like with the same approximate distance of what it happened before in the beginning of this video. And uh, the microphone is very close or almost touching the sound isolation shield. And this is what it sounds like when I'm actually trying to yell and amplify the noise in the room. I don't know what it sounds like still because I just found out that it was backwards, but we will see when I'm editing this. And finally, this is what it sounds like when there's nothing um, covering the microphone at all. You'll probably hear a lot of room tone, probably worse, I have no idea. But this is also what it sounds like when I'm actually shouting too. And if you sing in this, and if you're singing loudly, this is what you're gonna be getting picked up and it's not gonna be a good recording session. If you add reverb, if you have any type of um, time processing, which is echo, reverb, or all that, or any type of time processing effects, it will screw around with your entire mix because the acoustics of this room is fooling around with the reverb and it's sort of amplifying it. The reverb and echo is amplifying your room tone and also your voice as well. And that's not a good thing to do. So we're going to take this off and finally, we're going to check out how to install this. So I think first of all, um, with the logo, and this has a peelable thing off of it. Um, you can peel it and um, the logo will be clearer and nicer, but for right now, I'm gonna keep it on. So I'm assuming since we're gonna be using five of these, um, we're gonna be basically using all of this hardware right here. So there are different types of um, screws here. There's hexes and then there's a Phillips. And by the looks of it, you're gonna use the hex to mount all these um, together. And you're also gonna use these nuts, which go on to each other. As you can tell, this is the centerpiece, of course, because of it having the logo. And also these don't have what this has right here. Of course it has it here, but you do have to rearrange everything. You have to sort of match this up correctly. And I think no matter what you do, it will match up correctly no matter what you place the order in these. What you do is that you slide these two together and they're pretty snug, honestly, and then you have to line up the holes. Then you can hold these and you grab these hex nuts here and you just slide them in. Then this, the bottom one, bottom because there's one up here and then there's one down here. This on the bottom goes straight through like that. Now make sure you don't place the screw half, like all the way in. What you have to do is you have to grab a nut here and you have to place it in this gap you have to be really careful because sometimes everything can fall apart if we place it in here. So you just place the nut in. Then you want to grab your hex wrench and you just screw it in because now um, the bolt, the nut is already in there and all you have to do is screw it in. Okay, so these are together and since I hand tightened them, um, they can still move freely. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the same thing for the next three panels and we're gonna see how big this thing is. they don't call me on Thanksgiving to not eat their food. I eat their food. Every single one of it. And this is no exception. I used every single panel. Five of them. And look how long this is. Like, 
<laughs> five panels is huge and I can tell you that. I don't know if this was a design flaw in this or if it's something with, to do with how I did it or if it's something to do with the washers, the hardware, anything. It could be either or, but I had trouble with this one. Whoop! I had trouble with this screw right here that the nut would not slide into its place um, completely. So I had to grab this thing right here, shove it through the hole and sort of carefully bend the entire bracket here for the nut to actually move so I can actually screw this in. And that happened um, up top here on the same end on the very last one. And this one, as I said to you, I had to do a little bit of finesse. It was a pretty easy assembly. The only thing I would recommend is not to do it while standing up like what I did and also not have a lot of counter space because this was difficult to hold and, you know, finesse and you had to squeeze all these panels together for them to line up the holes. So now you're going to be wondering, how do I mount this? So as you can see, there's three holes. As I said, the logo is the center. You can see the center. Here's two, here's two. This is the center. So what you do is that you find the center, which is these three right here. There's three screws here. Um, you'll see that they have the same type of screw pattern here. But if you look inside these holes, there's no um, actual thread part in there. The middle one with the logo has the three screws in here. What it looks like you do is that you place it onto here. And then what you do is that this is when a table will come in handy is you grab one of these Phillip head screws and you just screw them in hand tying them first or just hand screw them in all three of them. So now you grab the little um, cute screwdriver that I'm definitely keeping. So you screw these in. And what I would do is that I'll do it in increments. And then once it is tight, you tie in all of them tight. So in this bag here, this is what I think is getting mounted. So by the looks of it, this is, I don't know if this is plastic or aluminum. You have to be really careful though, that's the thing. And what I think this does is that this hole right here will screw this into right here like so. I almost did a bad doo-doo and it was supposed to be like a washer right here and then this screws in and I was like oh okay so as you can see it is mounted alrighty next up is this piece I think this piece might be like a counterweight it has some a little bit of weight to it and it goes to right here because I mean it's obviously obviously the smallest screw here so for you to mount this all you have to do is grab this washer here this and the nut that can go to this, a knot or a nut or knob, and um, you put the washer on the bracket first, slide this on, and then from the bottom, you screw. So you do get um, one of each. So you do get the hex nut extra, the uh, Phillips head extra, and you also get a nut extra, which is pretty good. Now here comes the fun part. Um, we're going to mount this again. So in order for you to do this, what you could do is this is pretty easy and you saw me doing it when I was doing, when I was screwing this into this, that you loosen this to the point of this, you can turn this freely and this is not going to unscrew at all. And if your microphone is like this, um, has a bigger hole and this one's smaller, you need a three eighths adapter. I think that's what it's called. And I'm going to use this exactly what came off of this so all you do is that you can screw this in and what you can do is tighten it and you're ready to go seriously it's amazing what 25 cents can actually do for you you can do is that you can actually just turn this like so and you can see that it's turning and you don't have to do this or anything you're just turning that and then all you have to do is tighten this it's all good and then you know how you mount your own microphone I know how to myself so right now this is pretty tall so these won't really work well but it will work at a certain degree this way 
So right now we're going to adjust these panels and they are finicky and these do snap. So what I think I'm gonna do is do something like this. So as you all know, you heard what it sounds like with the newer and also where the microphone is out in the open. And as you can tell, all these things are straight and they're not bent yet. I will be bending them in a few, but I want to test it out and see what it sounds like just like this, how it was before, if there's any type of difference with the certain type of extra large of the newer one, which was similar to three panels. And this one's actually five now. So it goes, it wraps around much more of everything. So let's test out and see what this sounds like. But first I need to install this. Okay, pop filter installed. Let's test this out. So I am sort of approximately the same distance away from how it was with the newer. Unfortunately, it was actually the wrong <laughs> end of everything. And it does sound clear now. I tested it out before I did this. So this is what it sounds like with this thing here, how it is now. And when I'm shouting, it might change. I don't know. We'll see in post. As you can see, I'm farther in, and this is the microphone up close to the foam. Not touching it, but it's very close to being touched. And this is what it sounds like with it being up close and these not folded. And when I talk loudly, this is what it sounds like. So we are the, sort of the same distance away with the microphone not touching the foam. It's farther away where it sort of was before. And this is what it sounds like when um, it's just regularly you know, just talking and with these canopies closed. And when I shout, and if you're really singing loud or doing an ADR or voiceover and you want to talk loudly, then this is what it sounds like in an open room. Now, as you can see, my face is basically planted and almost buried in this thing. And um, the microphone is sort of touching the back wall of this, but it is touching the top. The top of the microphone is touching the top of the canopy. And um, this is what it sounds like when I'm up close to it. Um, and this is what it sounds like with the microphone touching it and just regular talking. And if I want to talk louder, this is what it sounds like. And to see if the microphone is going to pick up my room noise. Honestly, in my opinion, I've done this for a few years now. I'm no expert. I do have an associate's degree in audio engineering, but um, honestly, I've, I've heard a little difference, honestly. It was ever so slightly a very, very good difference. You can hear a difference between the newer one and also this one, but as I said, it's very minuscule. I do have pros and cons about this unit because I want to give you my true thoughts on this. Is it worth it? Yes. Is it durable? Eh. With my situation, this thing ain't going to be moving. It's probably going to be moving maybe three inches and that's pretty much it. This is mainly in my closet. And if any of one, like especially my sister wants to move it, she'll move it forward and that's pretty much it. But if you're that type of person that's going to be traveling, is rough with your stuff and doesn't take care of your stuff, um, is clumsy sometimes because honestly, this thing is pretty top heavy as you can see. It, it's, it does move. This stand is no joke. Honestly, this stand is like the sturdiest stand I have. I personally think this is not going to be for you if you're going to be moving around a lot, traveling a lot, um, being very clumsy, being very rough with your stuff. I think this is going to be a good thing for stationary or even just move little tiny movements around. But if you are careful with your stuff and you're not clumsy and you store this correctly, I think this can be really good for traveling. Then when you're done with this, you can easily unscrew everything, place it back in a bag or in just maybe back in its box and move on with your day. It's, I like it because of that. Unlike the newer one, you can just collapse it and it's just this huge box. And one of the problems I have with this is, as I said in the beginning of this video, is it's just plastic on metal. Plastic on metal does have a tendency to wear and it can snap. I mean, what's stronger, plastic or metal? 
Now this might be my part of it not screwing it completely, like really wrenching it hard, but um, this thing is a little flimsy. I'm holding the st microphone stand right now with my foot and I'm just moving these things around and they are flimsy. Unlike the newer one that when you try to move it, it doesn't like, the only thing that moves is moving it this way. With up and down, it doesn't really flex much because it's metal. But this is plastic, so it is gonna have some flex to it, as you see here. It is gonna have some flex, but as I said before, if you really take care of this and you know what you're doing, this will last you a bit. So overall, would I recommend this to someone? Yes, I definitely would recommend this to someone. For how cheap this is and how big it is and how impactful it is in a room like this, yes, I would recommend it. So this, runs on Amazon for around $60. Is it worth $60? In my true opinion, yes, for some people. Have you subscribed yet? If not, what are you doing? You should. When you subscribe, there's something called a notification bell. And when you press that, you will get notified whenever I upload a video like this or any type of video. I also have a vlogging and gaming channel. The links will be in the description box below and you can check it out the last 20 seconds of this video. I also found out on this main channel right here, 98% of you aren't subscribed who watch this channel or watch my videos. So if you just go ahead and subscribe, you're supporting me and you're supporting future videos like this. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making this. I'm pretty impressed with this, honestly. I think this is gonna be replacing the newer one. Also, I wanna give a huge, a very, very huge shout out to Xtuga, the company who sent this out to me and also who made this. And I'm really impressed with this. And also catch me in the next video when I'm gonna be actually reviewing the Xtuga E22 audio interface. I'm very excited to unbox this and stay tuned for the next video. You don't wanna miss it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And this is the Tech Manny sign off. See you later, guys.